Peter Nygaard, a Finnish Canadian fashion tycoon and self made billionaire who parlayed an $8,000 loan into an empire with annual profits in the hundreds of millions. We're going to die unless we do something about it now, and therefore, let's get on with that. And while America slogs behind men in ethics and politics, we traveled everywhere in the world just looking. Well, Parliament introduced a regulated system of stem cell research. The Bahamas has an opportunity to become a world leader among nations in this field, and this legislation is designed to help achieve that goal. Prime Minister Christie has shown courageous leadership passing this historic legislation that has positioned Bahamas to be the leading edge of the most significant medical well, discovery. Celebrity guest. Peter invited some of the world's most prominent doctors and specialists from Nygaard Biotech, a leader in the fields of life extension, wellness, and longevity. My main interest for the last uh, 15 years has been stem cells as a potential treatment for Parkinson's disease. And in recent times, thanks to uh, encouragement from Peter Nygaard, I've gotten interested in the potential application of stem cells to reverse aging. I'm a stem cell guy, and I got uh, connected with Peter when he recognized that using stem cells might be one way to both understand and also reverse the aging process. Peter has been a pioneer in so many ways. He often feels very comfortable being at that leading or bleeding edge. And so it's just a privilege to have someone like Peter championing the work that we do. And I think in four or five years hence, we're gonna have something to say to the whole world. I met Peter Nygaard at a conference and I found he's a great guy and a passionate advocate of stem cell research, which I find wonderful. I admire his passion. It's awesome the way he wants to move things forward. He really shows initiative, and just as much as I, he wants to see these cells applied in people. The doctors are really the celebrities of the celebrities. These are brilliant, brilliant people that I'm so pleased that I could be associated with them. They're so instrumental in, 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 in what I'm trying to do. Each one of them has a tremendous amount of knowledge about their own respective discipline. You know? And for me to be able to work with so many together in all the disciplines of myself, it's a real privilege. You've been involved in research and you're a pioneer in stem cell therapy now and in injecting your own stem cells. And this is to extend your life. How long do you expect to live? What is your goal? And do you have a fear of death? Of course, we all have a fear of death, and uh, and uh, <clears throat> and how we overcome fear of death is that we in we invent this word called heaven. You know, heaven is everybody's way of living forever. So uh, mankind, man has always had this zest to live forever. Uh, the the pharaohs, you know, uh, mummified themselves, you know, and took all their belongings with them and went into this heaven, right? And and, uh, and and every one of us have been taught that that's that's the good place to go to. You know, I, I think instinctively we're all instinctively, almost by design, by necessity, we're all designed that designed not to fear it because there is a better place. You know, uh, I think we all would like to live in this world as long as we possibly can, and 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 uh, and, uh, and not just go blindly into this this heaven area. So it's a roundabout way of answering your question. You know, the, we have now the capability with modern day science, and it's a wonderful era we're living in right now. We have now to, to, uh, to live considerably longer, 20, 30, 40 years longer. We have now going to go past, the, our magical age is 120. <clears throat> 120 is when your cells actually finally die, you know. If you haven't got died from other diseases, you know, the body breakdown diseases, then you're going to die just from losing your cells. You know? and, and if we can keep our cells alive, and, and, uh, and who knows how long that will take us. So, so people's common words today in the field that I'm in, you know, is, is, is 20 to 40 more years, you know, that we can, we can live till we're 150, for example. And it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a goal and a good goal. I think it's really meaningful for, for younger people like yourself, you know, if you, especially if you start taking care of yourself early in life, you know, and 
prevent yourself from getting old and uh, go into and uh, start practicing all the things that are available out there. The, the, the Times Magazine came up with a picture of a child face and, and said that this person can live till 180 years old, you know. You know, a person born now, you know, we have enough science now that by the time they become old that they're going to be able to live that much longer with all the modern day knowledge that we have right now, you know. And, and then there's, a, there's a, lot of, a lot of people in there besides myself who are now trying to make that a reality, you know. And of course, ultimately, ultimately for ourselves, you know, but the byproduct of that is that if it's not for ourselves, it certainly is, is for our next generation of people, you know. Uh, so we really are, we really got to take this seriously. I think this is the first time in history that we really could see us being able to extend our life like big time, not just a year or two, you know, but have a leapfrog. Right? And, and, and an interesting parallel to that, we're also seeing the world self-destructing. There's a big element in here in the world today that says that the next generation is not even going to live as much as our generation because we're just killing yourself from eating, you know, mm -hmm. killing yourself from diabetes, you know, we're self-indulging the point. So while we have the opportunity to live 40 years longer, what we're going to do is blow it and live less. You know? right. yeah. And this is all about the education process now. You know? It's how people really want to approach this thing, you know? because, because the opportunities are so immense. And, uh, and, and the more people learn about the world of stem cells and learn about the whole medical field, the more enthralled they become with it. So you've got this two, these two sides going at you all the time. You know? Those people who just don't care, you know, and uh, just going to eat themselves to death, you know, and get full of diabetes and die younger. And then there's going to be a whole new generation of people who are of, of sort of in my camp, you know, who, who sees the opportunities and, and see it early, you know. So I, I talk to some of my girlfriends and the young people around me to start taking care of it, that stop aging at the age of 25, because when you hit age 25, it's all downhill from there. So you want to stay at 25, start doing it right now, because you can. And you can, yeah. I know you're talking about setting up anti-aging clinics that mimic some of the findings that you've experienced, but tell me, is that one of your passions right now? What, what are you wanting to create and leave as a legacy for Peter Nygaard? Well, you know, the key issue is that I looked at my life and uh, I was 68 years old, as in those photos, and, uh, and you know, it's, you said to yourself, you know, the trip from 70 to 80 is not a nice trip. A lot of bad things can happen It can to be you. tough. You see, and I says, I'm not going to go on that trip. You know, I ain't going. That airplane might crash. And, uh, and, and I started really getting into what you call preventive maintenance, preventive uh, cures. Very few people pay any much attention or any attention to the preventive part of medicine, you know. And, uh, and then also to the point of trying to find some of the cures for the things that will become uncurable later on. Yes. You know? So Western medicine gets a limitation, you know, at a certain point, certain point you say, well, that's all we can do for you, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I don't want to reach that desperation stage. So I wanted to really get ahead of it, you know, again, find myself in a position where I was able to, A, to have a preventive path, and yes. B, to be able to, to have a cure path that is already predetermined, you know, know what the best doctors are, know what the latest medicine is, know what the latest alternative medicine is, know what this whole world of stem cells will bring you, you know, and yes. it's bringing a lot. Yes. So in order, in order to practice that, in order to use that, I had to also then start writing laws for certain countries, like Bahamas and so forth, to be able to have a host country that actually can facilitate that legally. Yes. So I can go in there and actually take this translational medicine, you know, and translate that then even for my own use and other people like me. So a lot of us who are in the 70s, 80s, or 80s to 90s, who really would love to use some of the latest discoveries and can't legally do it in the United States. You know, they have to go to China or some China. other countries like I'm trying to create. And, and, uh, and they would pay a fortune for that, you know, to get it, give life a chance. You know, yeah. and not only give it a chance to be able, not, never mind to die, but also to regenerate themselves, to get younger. Yes. You know, so that's a quest. So I've been, I've been really on that agenda to write the laws for a country, and I'm pretty close to finishing that off. 
And if that happens, and it will, that's going to be a magnet to attract all of the top medical scientists there, medical doctors there, and then the high-end patients there, you know, who can afford it, you know. Sure. Yeah. Well, Peter Nygaard, that, that's a huge um, dream and mission. I, I think that there is controversy, and for good reason, uh, regarding protocols for stem cells, maybe uh, some groups or doctors or laboratories aren't quite up to speed to the best uh, steps and procedures to gain or, or derive stem cells in a safe, healthy manner, to store them, uh, to expand them, whether it's safe or not to expand them. So there's some questions, of course. So it's really good that you're going to a country where you can establish some laws and some protocols and some criteria. So you're clearly attracting some of the great experts in the world. I know you've talked to some of the people that I know, and, and these people are some of the greats in the world. Yeah. But putting that collective knowledge is what you're doing. It's like assembling a, a, a anti-aging super team, isn't it? Yeah, anti-aging super team is right. Yeah. And and you know you can do all this now in countries like Mexico and a lot of these countries. In fact, almost every country. Well, how do you know what you're getting though? But really, how right? do you know what what you're getting is the key issue. And, and it could be dangerous. It I mean, could, you have to be sincere about it. It could be and it's dangerous. And, and you know, some of the studies in China where they did it, the reports from the clinics were rave incredible, but when they went in with the U.S. team and reviewed actually several hundred patients, the results weren't all as good as they were claiming. You know, that's when there right. was legitimate review boards looking at peer review, yeah, that's right. the results weren't what they were claiming. So we have to tease out the fantasy, the false, and the lies and, and show the truth, yeah, right? That's right. And these laws are all more about keeping the good guys in and keeping the bad guys out. Okay. You see? Yes. So, they, so, so now the bad guys are in there anyway. Yeah. You know? Now it's a really getting tough laws to get the bad guys out and only allow the good guys in. And so they're really for the, really the safety precautions. So, right. <clears throat> so, you know, you can parallel that to, um, you know, if you take a word like abortion, you know, you used to have to go in the back lane and get a coat hanger abortion, you know. Yeah. Then you get into a legitimate environment, safe environment, and, and make it, and the risk involved with the yeah. other is horrendous. Yeah. Now, now you do it in a proper environment, and that's what you want to do in a proper legal environment. Right. And, uh, and that's, that's, that's what the law is all about, yeah. really, really to make sure that really the safety is there, you yes. know. The, the core safety, you know, the stem cells in the first place, you know, can be any poisons coming through there. Yeah. Because some of the countries, if you hear what they have to say, they'll make the claim that, look, stem cells come from your body, how could they possibly be harmful, they're safe, and all they can do is good. And that sounds good, but we're dealing with actual biological material. Yeah. And biological material, if processed incorrectly, could be yeah. every bit yeah. as dangerous. It could cause tissue rejection, even death. So people need to know there is a side that's not being talked about. So what you're doing is truly important, is yeah. helping people to search out and, and have a reliable source where we know there's confidence and I hope you're successful in that what do you think is going to take another year or two or what's, what's, I, what's going on with it I think the government Bahamas uh, the Prime Minister himself was here at this conference last year yes uh, he then got into power with a little bit of help from me last May uh, I totally convinced that uh, he had to do this that medical tourism meant to be able to attract an agenda such as that. Sure. And he saw the need need for it as well as the opportunity to make his country great from a medical point of view, a medical tourism point of view. Right. And uh, and and uh, he's on his way. He got a committee together already. They've been studying it. They're coming out with the final report at the end of this month. Mm -hmm. um, I suspect that he'll write it into law already, uh, January, February. I think by this time next year, we're going to be in real serious business. When it comes time for you to consider your expiration, how do you feel about these new technologies like life extension, where they're preserving people's body for science to rejuvenate them at a later date? Absolutely. Considering the alternatives, that as an alternative to, to getting burned or, or getting eaten by the, by the worms, in the ground, I mean, uh, drowning, I mean, that, that, that's, the, of all of those options, that's a, surely got to be the best option. <laughs> surely got to be the best option. I, absolutely, and I think that, that cryo, cryo uh, practice is going gonna, gonna to take a big hold, you know, especially when people can also leave their money to themselves. The cryonics is really the, really going to become in vogue is to the proper and correct way of really burying yourself, dying. 
as I said, considering the alternatives, you know, is by far is the most attractive. It's going to be the way to go. I mean, anybody would be foolish to do any other way of burying themselves than that. And, uh, and, and, and uh, that business is going to explode. You can do vetrification successfully, and then you can also leave your money to yourself or leave money to foundations to bring you back to life, you know. They will succeed. The area of preserving our bodies is, is here to stay, you know, and it's going to be a big, big field. So this is kind of like going back for Coca-Cola or Apple. If you could tell people, invest now, because this is going to be huge. This is the moment to jump in. This is the moment to jump in. We're, we're only about 10% of the way there in this whole world of, quote, stem cells, you know, the whole world of stem cells, because that's, the, that's their cell that really grows into, that's the really, stem cell goes into cell and cell goes into tissues and so forth. That's the start of it all, you know, and it starts from the West. And, uh, and uh, so we affectionately call this whole world the stem cell world, you know, but, but, uh, but uh, we're just at, the, just at the very start of it. This is the biggest thing that's ever happened in the history of the world. This is way bigger than electronics, you know, the electronic boom, you know, the computerization. Is it, this business is 10 times the size of that, you know, and, uh, and there's nothing bigger than in this world has ever seen. And it is getting more and more exciting every, every day, you know. And, and the discoveries that have been coming out now every single day now that's been started 15 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago, are just now coming out and they're finding more and more and more. And if people really want to invest into something, this is meaningful investment now. They, you could not, you'd be investing into yourself, you know, and into your livelihood. And man, there's not a better investment, you know. You know, so, you know te technically, your charity starts at home, you know, and you, better you can, you know, it's just in the, like in an airplane, you know, they tell you to take that gas mask, put it on yourself first, because if you don't put it on yourself, you can't help the other guy, you know. Well, this is what this is about, you know, I've, I've done it for myself first, and because I did it myself, I can help other guys, you know, etc. More people I can get into this business now, join me, like-minded people, the faster we'll get these solutions done, you know. And there's many, many of us in the same field, you know, who are, who are waving that same flag, you know, so I'm just, that's just one voice, but I perhaps have done it more actively than anyone else. I put perhaps as much or more money than anybody else is in it. I've, uh, I've met with all the best doctors in the world, and I've used my own body as a guinea pig, you know. <laughs> so, so, so that last part, that last part is very critical, you know. So I've already put my body where my mouth is, you know, at the end of the day. And, and the good news is that it's worked. I've been doing anti-aging now for six years. And ladies and gentlemen, I've been taking stem cells now four times a year for the last six years, and it has worked.